In this video, we're going to give you a quick introduction to the uh, new SBS Fenris nuclear powered attack submarine. Uh, currently, we're at uh, Creative Dock. Uh, for the SBS, there are actually four entrance points, actually five. You have a maintenance hatch to the front, which is controlled by a keypad. Um, the security keypad number is 5468. You'll notice that's posted all over the ship, as well as in the CO's office. Um, the other point is that there is an aft airlock. There is a maintenance door for the uh, engine room, reactor room. And then you have your main entrance point on the sail. And on the bottom, there is an interlink airlock. Uh, that is your going to be your main egress ingress point if you're doing operations while submerged. It's the fastest filling airlock. So let's uh, enter the Fenris. So just as a bit of declaimer right now, I'm running on low physics mode. There's a lot of uh, systems within the Fenris. Um, it is a big vessel too as well. So um, it takes a bit of a performance hit when it's closer to shore. So we're just going to run it with low physics uh, right now. Uh, so we're going to enter the Fenris. These are the airlock controls. You notice that this indicates green and green, indicates that the outer door and inner door of the airlock are currently unlocked. Open it, this is for the outer door, and then enter kind of the airlock entrance point, and then we can open the inner door. Now we're entering now command and control. Lights and heat. So I just turned on the heat, turn on the lights. This is command and control. In command and control, you have a, like a status panel. Helmsman's control. This is for uh, torpedo and sonar. Turn on the systems. This is the Valkyrie systems. The Valkyrie are the four missiles located in the vertical silos. Just open those silos. On the front as well, you notice that there are um, two additional doors to the front. Those are the loading doors for the torpedoes in order to access that door. You can control it either here. You see those two doors pop open. And this is where you can load torpedoes in, as well as there's an access control keypad here right next to the doors. So we're going to close that. Just hit the reset button. But uh, we'll cover off more about the torpedoes and the Valkyrie missiles later on. Uh, this is kind of the situation of wearing this. This is kind of where the captain would sit. You have access to various screens, periscope, uh, various cameras, weather. And then this is a video control. You can control the channel feed number by entering the number in here. Going back to the map. At the map, this would, uh, there's a radar activate. The uh, periscope is controlled from the situational awareness and so we'll just turn that on. Um, the, the periscope can be viewed as well by the helmsman but the helmsman does not have control over the periscope. That is done at the situational awareness. To control the periscope rotation you just click on the screen. If you want it to come to a stop you click on the dead zone point. If you want to elevate the periscope you just click on the location of the elevation so in this case here, if I wanted to elevate to, so zero 0.4, 0.3, we'll get it down to horizon. Now it's rotating quick. The further you push, the faster it'll rotate. Now we're just a complete stop. Laser designator, night vision. So let's just. Uh, carry on. Status board shows you the various um, status of different things on the ship. You do not control the reactor from here. The con reactor controls are beyond the store. The reactor room will go there shortly. Uh, but this shows you battery power, reactor temperature, pressures, uh, power plant generation. This is the status kind of on all your doors. Uh, this indicates, in this case, when it's white and white, that those two doors are open up. You can force closure on doors. When it's red, it indicates that it's uh, locked. 
for example, in this one here in the interlink, the interlink is below water, so it is currently locked. It is uh, open to the interior. So if I want to force doors closed, I can click this. This kind of shows the maintenance hatch, which is the engine room, reactor room, and torpedo maintenance hatch. So let's uh, go to the reactor room and let's start the power up. Turn the lights and heat. Your controls for your reactor are here. This will turn on the reactor. This will start the port generator side. And this will start up the starboard generator side. The reactor will start to generate heat. Once it, uh, then it will start to transfer that heat through the pumps into the boiler. There's a boiler for the port side and a boiler for the starboard side. And each of those boilers powers five steam turbines. Those steam turbines are connected to the large generators in the back. Uh, once these get up to full speed, uh, they will combine, can produce a combined uh, total of about 8,500 swats of um, electrical generation. The one on the port generates slightly more than the one on the starboard. This will generate about 4,500. This is about 3,900. They're absolutely identical, but I found with the creations are something that gives priority to the port side, so I've never been able to figure out why the starboard side sometimes is a little behind, even though it is absolutely identical. So it's going to take a bit of time for it to uh, charge up. Right now the temperature is climbing in the reactor, so we'll come back to this a little bit later uh, to see how it's doing. So let's continue the tour to the back section. On the back behind here, we have, uh, this is the um, interior control for the maintenance door. Four, six, eight. Door opens. If you want to close the door then, just reset the lock. This goes back to the aft corridor. In the aft corridor, we have like a tool room. There's a cabin. A, another cabin. We have a refresher station, a washroom, kind of a pseudo shower. We have a aft storage, which has some uh, tools and some various wares. And then we have the uh, aft airlock. It's more of a, it's an airlock, but it's not the fastest airlock. The fastest airlock is the interlink for both filling and uh, cycling. Uh, this is basically meant as an ingress point or emergency access. So you can use it as an airlock, but it typically will fill up slower. In order to use the airlocks, um, I'll show you that how it works in the interlink. It's quite a bit faster. You have some uh, fire hose attachments. This is the med bay. And again, the tool bay. So let's proceed to the front. Uh, let's see how we're doing here. Reactor's at 152, so it goes to a max of about 160. And now it's going to start the temperature buildup in the boilers. To come back to, once it gets up to 100. We'll go to the forward corridor. The forward corridor is a bit of living space. Turn on the lights and the heat. We have kind of a crew lounge. Another cabin on the front. These are the silos for the Valkyrie missiles. Here we have a communications room. It has a two-way radio. There's another two-way radio located in the CNC. And then we have the CO's cabin. Uh, the CO's cabin, again, if you're looking for the door, combos, etc., find it right here in the safe. Next, we're going to proceed through and the, to the torpedo room. Torpedo room. Again, there's the loading doors. Our torpedo room is comprised of, there's two uh, torpedo tubes which are fed by a total of, there's a total of six missiles, three, uh, three, three, six torpedoes, three torpedoes per side. There's one that's currently in the uh, hatch. Uh, there are some manual overrides here, so let's open up that door. So I'm going to force open the unit door. You can see the way it works is that uh, this will move into firing position once it's uh, set to prep by the torpedo station. Uh, once this has been launched, this uh, will empty. The water will empty out of it. This next torpedo will drop down to position. Uh, the door will close. It will fill. And during that position, during that time, this next this torpedo here will fall into position into the next. So we can demonstrate that a little bit later on. 
here in at the front you got your maintenance hatch and then this is a secure storage room Put the code in now we have some more stuff here in the front reset the door click here okay let's proceed back to the reactor room we can hear things spinning up That's how we're doing for power. And this is at uh, over 3,000 swats, 3,200. Total power generation around 6,500. It'll get up to about 8,500 uh, units, swat units of power generation. That's more than enough actually to power the all the motors to run at flank speed, which is 20 knots on the surface, 34 knots submerged indefinitely, uh, barely touching the batteries. Close the door and let's do some stuff in Helms Control. Let's get us started and uh, get us running. So, we have the Helms Control. In terms of controls, you have your kind of master control panel here in the front, master display panel here in the front. You can cycle through the various cameras. Uh, Periscope is currently turned off. Uh, so, this is from the camera at the top front. There's a camera here at the front. There's a camera down below underneath the interlink. And then there's an aft camera. So you can cycle through those various cameras. Um, if you want to turn off the HUD overlay, you can click on that button. If you want to turn off the monitors altogether, you can turn that off too as well. Uh, here on the side, we have a moving map, Bono's moving map. And then this is your ballast controls. Uh, there are three modes you can blow all ballast, which basically empties all the ballast to give you um, full buoyancy. You have neutral buoyancy, which sets the uh, Fenris to a position where um, it will be as neutral as possible, so the depth engines and any changes in terms of pitch will be at a full effect. And then you have a manual control. Uh, here is your autopilot GPS entry. So you can enter in a GPS point. So just for setting up for the future, I'll set up a GPS point for right here. You can enter in the panel, and then when you're ready to start autopilot, you click here. This is your depth controls, auto depth controls. Um, there's multiple ways of controlling depth. Uh, one way you can control it is using the up and down keys to control the depth engines and that pitch. Or you can use auto depth. You turn on auto depth by clicking this button, and then you go up and down here and adjust the depth. But we'll demonstrate that once we get out into a little bit deeper water. Uh, in order to control the throttles, there are throttle presets. So I'll just bring up the uh, show controls. Throw presets are stop, slow, halves, standard, full, and flank. So let's get going and let's move us out at flank speed. So I'll give you on pressing one to ramp up, and we are at flank speed, which should bring us to about 20 knots. Let's adjust the camera. Or it down. There we go. I'm just going to close the hatches for the silos. The other controls you have is um, so axis one, which is your uh, A and D, uh, is lateral. Lateral is basically moving from side to side. They're low power. It's more designed for if you're in docking, you want to move typically from side to side just to kind of reposition yourself. W and S is your pitch controls. Press W to pitch forward. S to pitch back kind of see the effect pitch in terms of right here. There is pitch stabilizers, which will try to always bring this to zero, zero when it's running steady. Um, your yaw controls are left and right. Actually, it turns quite fast. For doing uh, yawing, it uses two different things. It uses the uh, rudder in the back, as well as that there are some yaw engines on the side that you can actually turn when you're completely stopped. So let's set us up into position where we are going to uh, begin diving. Um, so we need to set our ballast to neutral. So click on this button here. Once you notice, it will cycle over to neutral mode. The ballast volumes are located here. There's a front and an aft ballast. And once this is flashing, it indicates that the ballast 
pumps are currently active and filling up the ballast. Um, the ballast controls are completely, I mean, levels are completely dynamic. As you start to expend munitions, like empty the silo, fire torpedoes, it will adjust the volumes in the ballast automatically um, in order to provide balance to the, uh, to the vessel. So right now it's filling up. It'll get to about 47,000 for both the forward and the rear. Um, and this will give you optimal controls for depth. Now we can start um, depth operations right now. We're going to do that automatically. It'll be most efficient once the ballasts are full and this stops blinking, but we can start now. So right now, we look at our depth profile. Um, there are three uh, depth uh, readers, meters uh, that are available. Uh, you have the forward, your mid, and your aft. It indicates that we are currently running at about five meters depth and beneath us is about 43 in the front, 41 in the mid, and 40 in the aft. So it indicates that the total available depth we can work with is about 50 meters. So let's start the auto depth hold. Auto depth hold, when you click this, it'll go to the depth that you're currently setting and set that as your AD depth. And then in order to adjust it up and down or to start your descent, click in this hold this button and you'll notice that the AD depth, which is our requested depth, start to go down. So let's bring us down to 50 meters. So just okay, press and hold the button until 80 depth. And you notice that the depth is going down. 35, 36, 37, 38. There we go, about 50 meters. And so what's taken over is that uh, the pitch controls are uh, assisting in the depth, as well as that there are depth engines in the front and in the back, the front and in the back, that are uh, basically pushing and pulling the vessel up and down. So this will hold us at a depth of 50 meters. We're currently running at flank speed, so the faster you go, the more lift um, the fenders has. So we, um, you'll notice some other things here in terms of the HUD. This is your throttle control. TP is true pitch. TR is true roll. These are basically show you what is the current pitch and roll of the vessel. AD depth is your what depth do you want the vessel to maintain. Depth is the actual depth it's at. Uh, this is basically our compass heading. Uh, the red pip here in the bottom indicates this is our autopilot point. Uh, this is a vertical speed and this is a horizontal speed. Notice now that we are submerged, we're running at uh, 35 knots of speed, so submerged speed is much faster. So let's turn on a pilot. We've set our GPS. Let's turn her on. Um, so AP distance is approximately one kilometer away. The fenders will automatically start turning towards it, and it'll adjust the throttle control to the optimum setting. So right now it's at zero because it's making a maximum turn. As soon as it starts to approach, a um, position where it's pointed at AP, it will dial up the throttle again. Once it arrives at location, it will dial the throttle all the way back and bring us to a complete stop. So at this point in time, Fenris is under complete auto control. We'll get up and uh, walk about. So if you actually look here at the map, um, one of the things on the map Go to. This shows that what is our um, angle off of the auto, posi auto pilot position. Um, this is the distance. And if you actually go at the map, you can show where the AP is. You also that see that reflected here in the situational awareness control map. It gives you the information. This is our current speed, our depth. You can actually note that as well. And the various panels that are located around the ship. In terms of situational awareness, um, situational awareness is typically with a captain will be sitting, and you have stuff like periscope control. Turn periscope off. Various camera. Weather. So let's go back to map. So in terms of the additional lights you see above. Blue indicates depth hold is active. Green indicates that AP is active. 
This is pitch stabilizer. It's a pitch stabilizer you can turn off on here. Typically, I would suggest leaving them on. Um, this is blow ballast. Yellow ballast, now it's solid. It's not flashing, which means it is now has the ballast levels at the level that uh, volumes it wishes. So we're currently approaching our AP. You notice that waypoint is reached. Throttle is brought down to zero, and it'll bring us to a complete stop. And then try to maintain depth at uh, 50 meters. So let's go over now some of the operations of the weapon systems. Um, so right here we have the Valkyrie. The Valkyrie is a, a GPS-based uh, ballistic missile system. There's no onboard radar. The um, target location is completely defined by the GPS location. Uh, you would define it here down the panel. So where do you want the missile to go? GPS. What is the height of the destination target? And the top at altitude. The top at altitude is basically what level um, do you want the missile to um, go to at its highest level in order to start its profile. So typically you find if you're going for further distance and you have to go over a mountain, you may want to set this to a little bit higher. Uh, optimally, if you can leave these alone, it'll automatically default to zero for the target altitude and 400 meters for top out. Um, in order to fire the Valkyrie, let's define a target. So we can go here, let's define um, just a target here. Let's find something we can fire at. Uh, optimal range is seven kilometers. Um, minimal range is about one kilometer. Um, it, at one kilometer, it uh, may not be able to turn fast enough in order to acquire the target and it will move out and try to move back in. So let's find something at about seven kilometers. I'm just going to choose like the this point right here. Set that as a waypoint. I'm going to set an altitude of about uh, 10 meters. I'm not going to touch that. Uh, in order to fire the missile, I need to make sure that the silo is open. So I'll open up silo 1. I'll open, let's fire all missiles. You can individually um, set the destination on each individual mission, and you can reprogram them in flight. So missile 1 is ready to go. Launch. Missile 1 is away. You'll see it's here in, uh, you can see the camera, so it's starting to gain altitude. It'll, you can fire the, the Valkyries basically from any depth, um, all the way down, from, fired it from 300 meters, you know, made right from the surface. So right now it's at 400 meters, it's trying to acquire a path into the location. Uh, the things you have is you have distance to target, its current speed, uh, how much rocket fuel is left, its battery, this is the channel number for the video signal, and this is the signal power. Um, so uh, signal power, this is the signal for the uh, receiver antenna. For, so if I wanted to reprogram the GPS, I can do that in flight. So if I wanted to change where this was going, I can program it and just click launch reprogram, and this will automatically adjust the missile to a new location. So for example, if I wanted to, in terms of the channel, you see it's reflected here, and the situation shows the V1 is currently at an altitude 270 meters. Range to target is 4,000. This is our target. Set this to one. That's the channel. And let's go to our video display. And this is what's currently being coming from the missile. So it's closing in on the target. And the missiles, I mean, you can set them to any number. Each one is four of them can be set to completely different locations. They'll show up on the map. Um, and, and they'll show up each target that we represent on the map for each missile. So it's closing in on that specific location. The way the Valkyries work, when it gets within about 100 meters, it'll fire off the kill engine, which will fire off four additional rockets and then slam that into the target. The plan is with the weapons DLC, this is designed as a ballistic missile that uh, once it gets within 10 meters of the target, it will detonate. Uh, so hopefully with the weapons DLC, this is able to carry a large payload. It will operate like a ballistics missile, get to its target, and then uh, detonate. So coming in right now, getting out of the video signal range, boom. So look, V1 has detonated. It's reached its target and detonated. So that's the operation of the Valkyrie.
if we wanted to. Let's uh, fire off the rest of the missiles. Let's switch to missile two. Switch to missile three. Switch to missile four. They're all away. They're all flying. And they're all heading for that target. If I wanted to reprogram, example, example, I wanted to switch from this. I want to have another missile basically to target here. So it's in flight. Let's reprogram number four to find this. I wanted to find the height as being, say, 20 meters. Um, so I just hit launch reprogram. Missile four now is going to a new location. So if we go to the map. Here are their destination points. T and one and two are going here. Four is going there. Eh, that's for fun. Let's go and retarget number three. So we're number three, let's eh, just target here. So we'll go number three. Turn the new GPS coordinates in. Reprogram it. That's where three is going now. Yeah, for fun, let's just watch and see how they're progressing. D4, an altitude of 200. Let's zoom in a bit. Yeah, they're all on track for their individual locations. So again, these have a range of about seven kilometers. V2, V4, V3, each closing in on their individual targets. And again, the hope is with the weapon DLC, these will be able to cover, carry some large explosive payload. They are GPS missiles. They don't have any onboard uh, radar. Everything is completely controllable by an external controller. So we can reprogram everything basically on the fly. Um, so the uh, if you wanted to change the way this works, if you wanted to you mean, tie this to a laser designator, which gives a GPS, you can do that. That's how the Valkyries are. Program. It's source programmable, gu source program programmable guidance. Uh, Everything is defined by what you sent to the to the missiles. Torpedo controls. We'll go over here. We have our sonar turned on. Sonar is not picking up any targets, uh, but doesn't mean we can't fire the missiles. Let's sort of the torpedoes. So in order to load up the tube, we'll prep tube one for loading. Prep tube for loading. It's going to start to flood the tube. It shows the water levels in the tubes. Uh, these are the various torpedo numbers. Torpedo 1 is currently in the port side. Torpedo 2, 4 is on deck. 6 is in uh, holding position. 3 is on deck. 5 is in hold position on the port side. Uh, so once I fired off the torpedo, then we can go back to the torpedo room and you can see how the uh, operation works in terms of the loading of the next torpedo. Water level is loaded up. And what it's going to do is going to move the torpedo into position. Water level's up, moving the torpedo into position. Both torpedo tubes are ready. And to fire it, um, if there is a uh, target on the desk, then it would uh, show up here. You can designate it. Right now, it had, does have, with the Marinos, they do have active uh, sonar. So if I fire it, it will try to look for a target. If it finds one, it will track in on it. So let's fire. One, two, two. Off. Play. Go. Yeah, sometimes they get stuck at the door. Door closes. Start to drain the tube. Let's go to the back here. Door opens. Next torpedo moves down into position. Absence captured. Door closes. Next raises up. Torpedo on the top. Drops into position. It's now in the next position. 
tubes are now flooding. Four in the position in the tube. Six is in the next position. And we should be ready to go for the next torpedo shortly. Go here. Oh, we actually have a target. Oh, something came in. So let's zoom in on this and see where it's sitting. It's indicating it's a bearing 169. Depth is approximately minus 3.6 meters. What the heck is that? Oh, there is something there. Well, let's fire at it. Four, six. Fire. Fire. So those now have been queued in to go to that specific target. So they will turn, and uh, this is the, the Magic the Marino torpedo. Uh, very well done uh, torpedo from the workshop. Highly recommended. You can see now it's in the position where it's draining the torpedo tube. Those two missile torpedoes are en route to the next one. Torpedo water level is zero. You can see there's a little camera here. Five is now in position, starting to flood the tube. Let's uh, bring this up to periscope depth. Periscope depth is about uh, 12 meters. All the Valkyries are detonated. Turn off the system, close the silos. Missiles, uh, torpedoes three and four are closing in on target. Nine seconds. Four has made contact. Three is going to make contact shortly. Oh, all right. Let's take a look and see what the heck we hit. So it's roughly behind us into the left. So let's go periscope control. Let's rotate that over. Uh, the camera um, the rotation on the periscope will slow down depending upon your field of view, so it allows you for a little bit more precise control as you're zoomed in. Uh, there it is right there. Zoom in. Yeah, you can see the flares gone up from the uh, Marinos that have made contact with the target. Let's fire off our next ones. Locked in, loaded, firing, firing. Out of the tube.
16 seconds to impact. Should be closing. Boom. Hits. And again, I hope I'm with the weapon DLC. There'll be ability to add a little bit more destructive power to the weapons. So there we've covered off the basic operations for the, uh, the Fenris. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, blow up ballasts and bring us to the surface. Blowing up ballasts. Ballasts will start to empty. You can hit emergency service and that will start to bring us up. Last thing I'm going to cover off is just some uh, I'll turn it off. Oh, depth, so it just sits on the surface. Is the operation of the uh, airlock. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and grab there we go. The, again, the interlink is the fastest. Uh, Airlock. So right now you notice that the red is indicating it is below water, so it is currently locked. Uh, what we're going to do is the inner door is open, so we're going to enter into the airlock. Uh, we are now going to start the cycling of the airlock. I don't need to close it, it will automatically close on cycle. So I'll hit cycle. And you'll notice that the water will start to fill up the airlock. Uh, the water is sourced from inside of the, uh, the Fenris. So the way it works is that irregardless of the depth, the airlock will then um, fill in, and empty at the exact same rate, irregardless of the depth. What you find is that if you're dealing with uh, trying to pull water from outside the Fenris and then push it you know, I mean, uh, at a depth, uh, it will not will work very efficiently, efficiently when you're working with pumps that are outside. So the beauty of this airlock is, irregardless of what depth you're at, it will fill and empty at the exact same rate. So once it gets to 100%, a door side door is now available. We'll open the outer door. And why are you not allowed? Uh, airlock controls here on the outside. So control everything with that door from here. Just do a little float around underneath. So here you can see underneath here, these are the uh, these are the depth engines and these are the pitch engines. The depth engines, and you know, since I turned the system off, are no longer running. There is a set in the front. And there's a set of depth pitch in the back. Uh, these are the doors for the filling of the, the way it works is instead of having there's a set of pumps on the ballast that blows water out, but the filling of the ballast is actually done just by opening doors. So that way all of the pumps can then be set to uh, exclusively be used for pulling water out. Um, here are the distance sensors. The distance sensors are on pivots. They will pivot so that they are always pointing straight down. And your depth and pitch engines are here. On the side, you'll find your engines then for your yaw controls. So actually, this is the front. Here's the light for the back. Now that we're above water, 
one of the things I can demonstrate is these are the loading doors for the torpedoes. So if you wanted to load new torpedoes, technically, open the doors, slide the torpedoes in, it will automatically start connecting them up and filtering them down and loading them into the appropriate positions. Close the doors, just hit, and those will close up and seal. So this is the Fenris. Um, hope you enjoy it and uh, have a good day.